Every Saturday, Hmong fathers and their sons gather at Stone Soup Fresno Community Center. Here, they create and preserve the traditional Hmong instrument, the kang. There are only a handful of artisans who are skilled in making this instrument. It is used at Hmong funerals and celebrations. Here is the process for making the kang. Step 1. Selecting the bamboo. Before we begin to create the kang instrument, we must carefully select a set of six bamboo pipes. This process is significant in the creation of the sacred instrument that has played an important role in the Hmong culture for thousands of years. An expert kang player knows how to look for all the elements that will help to bring to life a quality instrument. The desired elements in the bamboo pipes are beautiful shape, circumference, and the placement of the knobs on the pipe. First off, on five of the slender pipes, the lower knobs must be evenly lined up to each other. The second set of knobs must be diagonally lined up. The only knob on the large pipe must be positioned slightly below the knobs of the other five pipes. This is what makes a perfect set of pipes and will create a fine instrument. This set of pipes cannot be used for the instrument because the knobs are placed at the wrong points on each pipe. Also, the largest pipe is too long. Step 2. Selecting wood for the wind chest. The wind chest is created from wood. After much trial and error, we've acquired a taste for using African mahogany and walnut. They both make for a nice wind chest and add quality to our instruments. Step 3. Carving the wind chest. Once we've shaped the two halves of the wind chest, also known as the body of the instrument, we then begin to hollow out the interior. The thickness or thinness of the wind chest wall plays an important role in determining the size of the reed which will be cut and attached onto the pipe. This part of the pipe is inserted into the full part of the wind chest. A thick wall requires a long reed and a thin wall requires a shorter reed. Step 4. Sanding and polishing the wind chest. The two halves of the wind chest are carved, hollowed, and then glued together. To create a smooth surface, the artist uses a mong knife along with sandpaper.
Step 5. Decorating the gang. One addition to the wind chest is the decorative strips which give the instrument character. It's important to cut the strips so that they fit tightly and neatly all the way around the circumference of the wind chest so as not to waste the material. Step 6. Fitting the pipes into the wind chest. We shape the bamboo pipe by first heating it, then pushing it through a customized hole in the wooden board. Mr. Her is shaping the largest bamboo pipe by pushing it through a hole that was carved into the board. Masking tape helps mark the surface area of the wind chest where the holes should be drilled to fit the pipes and the final assembly of the instrument. <laughs> If the pipe does not fit into the hole, we use a sharp tip on a mong knife to enlarge the hole and continue this process until the pipe fits tightly into the hole. If a hole is too big, we will use a special material to seal the hole. The type of tools used in this process are critical to the overall outcome. We use Hmong knives with tips that have been sharpened specifically to complete the work that a machine cannot accomplish. Step 7. Carving the finger holes. The finger holes drilled into each pipe are customized to the length of the fingers of a gang player. The holes are carved closer to the cavity of the instrument for players with short fingers and further away from the cavity for players with long fingers. The customization is important. It ensures that the player's fingers can fully cover the holes while they are playing the instrument to produce a quality sound. Step 8. Creating the reed. Once the wind chest is completed, they set out to create the reed which will be attached to the individual bamboo pipes, which are then inserted into the wind chest. This process begins with the selection of a particular brass metal. The brass metal is heated, then cooled before it is pounded. It is then cut into a smaller size, and that becomes the reed. Each reed is unique. The reed is what gives the gang instrument a voice and brings it to life. <laughs> Step 9. 
tôi đã đặt ra ok và tiếp theo lại nữa Step 9. Placing the reins. Once the reed is cut to fit exactly in the designated slot on the pipe, the artist then makes a slit on the reed which produces sound when it is blown. <coughs> Step 10. Pounding and placing the mouthpiece. Once we have assembled the instrument and it is ready to be played, we then add the brass mouthpiece. Step 11. Testing and adjusting the gang. We play the instrument and test the sound of the pipes. If there is no sound, we then hollow out the pipes. With all the parts connected, the artist then begins testing his instrument, allowing it to sing the songs of birth, life, and death. 